Hi, Miriam Boccaccio. Today we're making pizza. I'm not a baker, but every holiday I make pizza. Uh, my mother made them all my life, and I started making them probably when I was about 21 or 22, and I love them, okay? I was influenced by Amanda and Linda to get a nonstick pizza on. Never in my life did I ever think I'd say those words. I have a beautiful, beautiful pizzell maker, but I want to try this one this year. So I'm going to show you how we make pizzell. Everybody in South Philly is saying, oh, I know how to make pizzell. Probably, you know, different parts, but that's what I know, South Philly. So I get all my ingredients ready, and you always put your wet ingredients in together and you're dry. Anybody that bakes knows that, okay? So I had six eggs here. I already cracked four, put them into the uh, food processor. Okay, I meant to say mixer, not food processor. So I had six eggs here, and the big debate always, always, when you're making cookies or pizza or anything is, how many eggs are you going to make? Oh, I'm only going to make three today because I'm making a little. But most people are like, oh, I did 24 eggs today. I can't do that. I'm doing six. I got four in the mixer, and I always crack my eggs in a separate dish because I want to make sure there's no blood in it or anything because then you have to waste all the eggs and throw them out. So crack them on a flat surface so you don't get any shell in there. And then put them in, okay? Put them in the dish so you make one, one mess. Okay, so we got that in there. And so we got the eggs are in. That's six eggs for this recipe. One cup of oil. You want to use, this is vegetable. You can use vegetable or canola, whatever you have, but I like vegetable. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, so we got one cup of that. We have, in here, I have one and a half cups of sugar. So sugar is not wet, but I think probably, I'm not a baker, but I would think because it melts that they put this in first. I don't know why. I'm just guessing. Okay, so we're going to pick this up. And we're going to blend this real nice. And this is where you want to put your flavoring in also. And I use honest seeds. People use honest oil or vanilla. You know, some people put like chocolate in there to make chocolate but sell. I don't like the chocolate ones. There's something weird about them to me. So my recipe calls for two tablespoons. So I'm going to put them in. You put them in with your wet ingredients because you want to get it all in and flavor. But I'll tell you the truth. I was packing all the half in. You know what I mean? So I, I like it honestly. Okay, so we're going to mix this up nice. Okay, I'm going to take this down. Because I have all that flour in a dish, I'm actually going to take this off so I don't make a big mess. And you can see how nice it's all blended. That's how you mix it. A couple minutes. Use your judgment. Now I have three cups of flour. You could put it in a little bit at a time, but you don't have to. I put it all in. And three teaspoons of baking soda. No, wait, I'm sorry. Baking powder. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my friends accuse me of giving them the wrong recipes. <laughs> but it is baking powder. Okay, so we're going to put that in. Now we're going to put this back in. I tell you, I'm not a baker. I'm not good with this stuff. And we had our restaurant where we did all the baking. So, okay. So we'll pull this up. And always, always, I know this much about baking. When you have flour in there, you start low, or you're going to have a whole white kitchen. So you start low until it starts incorporating. You could do this by hand if you wanted to, but it's a lot of arm work, so you got a mixer in the kitchen, use it. Okay, I'm going to put it a little bit higher now. To mix it. You can see how beautiful that is. And I'm actually going to turn it off and I'm going to take it down because I want to make sure it's all mixed in. Yeah, okay, beautiful. I'm going to take this off. 
Whoop. You can see the dough is like sticky, very tacky. What I do at this point, I put it in the refrigerator. You could put it in an hour, a couple hours, overnight. Just put a piece of plastic wrap on it. And then when this is ready, I'm going to come back and show you how I press them. So I'm transferring the dough into a bowl because when you press them, it's easier to have something low instead of this high. Now, if I did 12 eggs or more, of course, I wouldn't transfer. But for just six eggs, I'm going to transfer. You see how sticky it is? And that's the way it's supposed to look. Don't think you did anything wrong. You didn't. This is it. But look at those beautiful seeds. Oh, my God. I tell you right now, I make good pizza. I really do. Yes, I will toot my horn about it. So we'll be back to press them later. I took the pizza dough out of the fridge. So you can see it's like nice and firm now. You know, it's still sticky, but it's firm. So... I'm trying this new non-stick iron, like I said. I don't know, my jewelry's out. I only made two itself. They look pretty, but they're thicker. The point of my making these is I like to make them thin, nice and thin. I squeeze it down, but you can't squeeze this down anymore. But um, I used this, and that got, gave me that size. This is a tablespoon. You can make them bigger if you want. But I'll just get a heaping one, throw it right in the middle. Use your fingers, of course, your hands are clean. Get that in there. I dip it in a little vegetable oil. And before I started, I brushed the whole uh, Patel arm with vegetable oil. You want to make sure you're getting all the little nooks and crannies. So that's why it's good to use a vegetable thing. Okay. So I don't think that the, the Teflon, well, I guess it's not called Teflon anymore. Non-stick is as good as the other one, but I'm gonna try it. And I'm gonna try to, usually with my old one, I would hold it very loose because I didn't want to press it all out the side. So with this, I'm gonna do it. Now I'm gonna try to press it as hard as I can. With my old maker, I counted to 25. Well, you can see all that smoke coming out. <clears throat> and when that starts to, to lighten up the smoke that usually means it's not, nothing wet under there so it's usually finished but you could still take a peek don't worry about it just make sure you put it down the right way so i haven't counted yet i think i counted to about 25 with them you can see the smoke is lightening up so let's take a peek gotta be easy when you take that peek see how it's coming out the sides that's why i press it down light in the beginning I'm going to press it down a couple more seconds. Well, look, no smoke. Can you see that? No smoke? Okay, they're done. Okay. You want them darker, you can make them darker. I put them here like this because I want them to cool. I don't want to stack anything before it cools. And they're starting to harden up nice. But I want to show you that. What you can do with these, after they harden, these are easy. They pop right off. If you want them to all look beautiful to me it's about the taste so my mother used to make tons and tons of these and my mother was from a boot out and that's where pit cells originated originated they came from some festival or something that they made it south philly we say from a brutzy <laughs> and the abrutzies brought them over but i'm gonna make these and it's not an easy job and it is time consuming but I gotta try this pan because I gotta know if I'm sending it back. Because if it don't work, it's out of here. And I'm hooking up my other one. One more round. But what I do is I put them on here, I lay them out until they cool. As they're cooling, then I flip them and put them over here. Sounds crazy, but I have to make sure that they're cool before I stack them. Otherwise, they're gonna get soft. And you don't want that. And when you store them, I found a really good way to store Pitzel without them, you know, um, getting soft. The, the aluminum foil pans that you buy that come with that plastic lid, believe it or not, last year I had nothing to put them in, no tin big enough. They lasted for so long, crispy in that. So we'll be back when all my Pitzel are done, so I don't know when I'll see you. So I picked up the first one that I made, and I want to hear this. 
Oh, you can't hear it, but watch. It's crispy. You hear that? That's crispy. That means if it's so hard to work and it's doing its job, they're a little thicker than I like them. But for this batch, I have no choice. I'm going to finish using this up. If I don't like them after they're made, I'll go back to my Palmer. The upside to this is it doesn't stick at all. My other one, I was constantly with the knife, getting in the grooves, getting everything out, trying butter, trying oil, trying everything. You know, every year you come up with a different way that it's not going to stick, but it always does. So this might be worth it. You subs you know, you just lose a little bit of the thinness, but you get to ease and make so it finished. It, it took me about 45 minutes, and this is what I got. There's, I got 60 pizzel out of this uh, amount that I showed you, six eggs, okay? So it's like five dozen. I switched from that tablespoon that I was using to a uh, teaspoon. Make, make it nice and heaping, about that high. And you know, that'll make this size. Now, I have never figured out how to make them round and beautiful how everybody does. I've been making these for about, I don't know, 35 years or more. So if anybody out there wants to share that tip with me, because I know somebody knows how to get them around. Maria was wrong. She said, maybe you roll them in a ball. She's seen people roll them in a ball. That was wrong. I tried that. Didn't work. She was right, though, about using the offset spatula to get them off instead of the butter knife, which made it easier. It slid on the nicer, and I don't have to worry about scratching my beautiful new <laughs> non-stick bitzel iron that I have to tell you, I do love. This would have taken me a lot longer than 45 minutes had I not had this iron hot. Because the other one constantly sticking and you're cleaning the grooves out like this. And everybody out there that makes them knows exactly what I'm talking about. Do yourself a favor. I love this one. I googled which were the best ones. I got Cucina Pro. And I absolutely love this machine. So... I hope you like the, this recipe, and um, I, I think if you, if you try my amounts or my recipe, you're really going to like it, so um, this is pre-holiday, this is for my family, whatever doesn't come out right, my family waits until I bake, because they just hope, they must put a curse on me, uh, as the horns, as the Italians say, for the burnt cookies, they wait for burnt cookies, broken pizza, so... I hope you enjoyed this. I want everybody to stay safe out there. If you like this recipe, please share it. Hit that subscribe button on my August BYO YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.